During the 1940s and the 1950s, Paul Hindemith was regularly cited as one of the absolutely central figures of the musical avant-garde, right up there with names like Bartok and Stravinsky and Schoenberg. But he did not maintain quite the same position of importance that they did over the years. And he's not now represented as strongly as they are in concert life, which is really a pity because he wrote some magnificent compositions. And that means it's really a big event when an orchestra like the New York Philharmonic plays a major symphonic work by Paul Hindemith, like the Symphony in E-flat, which we hear very infrequently. The Symphony in E-flat, he composed for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. This is from the period when Hindemith left his native Germany during the Nazi era. Uh, and because he was married to a woman of Jewish heritage, he had no option but to leave. And he came to the United States. And so this is uh, from right in the period in which he is discovering a new country. And one of the things that happened at that time is that he was commissioned by the Boston Symphony to write this piece. He wrote it for Serge Kusevitsky, the conductor of the Boston Symphony, 1940. But uh, then Kusevitsky and Hindemith had some sort of falling out. And so the result was that the piece was not premiered until 1947. And that's when this piece really began its journey into the orchestral repertoire. Spiritually, I often think, Hindemith was really the direct descendant of Anton Bruckner, one of our great earlier symphonists. And I say this not because they shared a musical language. They didn't at all. Hindemith had his own distinct language, and it was very different from Bruckner's. But they share a sense of monumentality, a sense of, uh, of, of being drawn towards massive textures, towards bowling over the listener with the sheer sound and the power of the symphony orchestra. Hindemith shared this with Bruckner. And there's another link, I think, between the two composers. Both of them wrote so spectacularly for the brass section. So when we listen to Hindemith's Symphony in E-flat, this will be a great opportunity for our audiences to just sit back and let the sound of this monumental orchestra, and especially of the brass section, just wash over them with brightness, gleam and solid blend of the sort that the New York Philharmonic Brass Section is very capable of. <laughs> 